Jeremiah chapter 26. We are halfway through Jeremiah. Halfway. How much we learned, how much we got. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, Josiah was one of the good kings of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house. Here's another street preacher. Now he's not in the temple, he's in the courts. And each court had its own specific doings and meanings and uh, supplies and service. Stand in the court. Where everybody's going to come and go. And speak unto all the cities of Judah. So this would probably be one of the three feasts. Where everybody's supposed to come three times a year. Which come to worship in the Lord's house. That's not a Baptist church. All the words that I command thee speak unto them. Diminish not a word. So God says, don't take it away. Eve did. You know what? You can't faithfully preach the word of God and not diminish the word of God if you have a modern Bible. Because modern Bibles diminish the Word of God. They take away. There's no way you can have a, a New American Standard Version, a NIV, uh, a New Schofield, a New King James, uh, Good News. They all take away from the Word of God the only, only one word one Bible that does not diminish the Word of God the King James Bible. If so, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way. There's repentance, which is not preached today in the modern churches. That I may repent. Look, oh, look at that. Repentance is not just from sin. Repent me, God, of the evil. It's a choice of decision to be, I'm not going to do it. I'm going the other way. For the man, it's, all right, I am down the road of evil. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to turn around. For God, I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to destroy the place. He's going to burn the place. It's this utter destruction. I'm going to stop Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to start stop the, the armies, they're not going to come. Which I purpose to do unto them because of their evil of their doing. So all the charges of Babylon, the army, the structure we're going to see is because of the evil. Because of the sin. Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, God, to walk in my law, God's law, which I set before you, to hearken the words of the servants of the prophets, plural, not just Jeremiah, whom I sent unto you both rising early, long before the destruction comes, sending them, plural, but you have not hearkened. Then I will make this house like Shiloh. We saw that in chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. So repeat. I will make this city a curse. It will happen to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking the words in the house of the Lord. They heard him. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people. That the priests, plural, and the prophets, well that's not the prophets of God. And I doubt if all those priests are the priests of the Levites, of Aaron. False priests, false prophets. All the people took him, Jeremiah, saying, 
thou shalt surely die. That's the answer to the preaching of Jeremiah. We're going to kill you. That's why Christians won't go in the world and preach the gospel. My family will hate me. My church will hate me. The people will hate me. And it, yeah, okay, I've had churches hate me. I've had pastors hate me. I've got my family members who hate me. I've got people where I preach at, they hate me. But there are people who love it. And there are people who are praying for you. And there are people who encourage you. Get out there and preach the gospel no matter what. They gave Jesus Christ the cross. Each of the disciples died violent deaths with the exception of John. And he was sent to the island of Platmas being put into boiling liquid for the word of God. Paul was beheaded for the word of God. Fox's Book of Orders speaks about the death of Christians for the word of God. Going all the world, preach the gospel. Don't diminish. Come to church. We got a church fellowship. We got a church bowling. We got a movie. And let my light shine. Why hast thou prophesied the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and the city shall be desolate without inhabitant? They heard him. They heard what he said. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Imagine what Jeremiah thought about. Not one person there is for him. Listen, at one time with Jesus, they took up stones to, 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 to stone him. One time his own hometown brought him to the brow of the hill. They were going to kill him. They had to let Paul down out of the city out of a basket because they were going to kill him. They killed Stephen. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord. Right there. They were in the king's residence. Sat down the entry of the new gate of that Lord's house. And, and the gates of the cities were the assembly, the, the town halls, the meeting place. Then spank the priests, plural, prophets, plural, unto the princes, plural, to all the people, plural, saying, This man, Jeremiah, is worthy to die. For he has prophesied against his city, as ye have heard with our ears. They're listening. Then spank Jeremiah to all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house, the temple. Right. The Lord told me to do it. And it's true. And against this city, all the words that ye have heard, God made me do it, God gave me the message. That's absolutely 100% true. And you got preachers today, oh, God gave me this message, and the Lord laid on my heart. And I gotta say, in most, most cases, yeah, right. Therefore, now amend your ways. He's still telling them to, to repent. And your doings. He's pleading with them. Obey the voice of the Lord your God. That the Lord repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. He's still pleading and he's still preaching the word of God. Whether they like it or not. Listen, I have been called to the farmer's market here in Daytona. I preach the gospel. They like it. They don't like it. Some hate it. So what? I'm going to preach the gospel. Why? Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the message. That's what I preach. If you don't like it, that's tough. As for me, behold, now look at Jeremiah. I am in your hand. Now, I mean, is that figurative or is that literal? Do they have their hands on Jeremiah? 
or is it figurative? That's the one. It could be. It may not be. Do with me as it seemeth good and meet unto you. Whatever you want to do, do it. <laughs> you know. You know what Jeremiah is. He's a turkey in October. It's eating all the feed of the, of the barnyard. Carrying his own axe. But. Know ye for certain. That if you put me to death. You shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourself. You know that's what Judas said about the blood of Jesus. I have betrayed the innocent blood. And you know what the priest said? Who cares? What's that to us? And they picked up all the coins and they bought a field to bury uh, people who were poor. You know what they care about? Nothing. Upon this city, upon the inhabitants thereof, we've already read to Jeremiah that there is blood already in the city and in the town in Judah and there's also been the blood of the prophets Jeremiah just be another one listen these are not vain words of Jeremiah he knows exactly who he's talking to and he knows exactly the people he's talking to for of a truth the Lord has sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. As I preach and other people preach and knock on doors and pass out gospel tracts, open the Bible, whatever God has them to do, that's what God has me to do. You do what you want with me. God wants to protect me. He'll protect me. If it's time for me to go, it's time for me to go. Then said the princes unto all the people, unto the priests and the, and the prophets. Now they're in the temple. And here comes the government stepping in. Church and state. This time it's the government in the church. This man is not worthy to die. For he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Does that sound like Pilate? I find no fault in him. Israel. Crucify him. Listen, I'll scourge him, but I find no fault in him. The priest. Crucify him. Listen, I'm telling you. I, I, I'll release unto you Jesus and I, I, I'll crucify Barabbas. No, we want Barabbas. Well, what do you want me to do with the one called the king of the Jews? Crucify him. Do you see Jesus? Now Jeremiah is going to be let go. Jesus wasn't let A tie does not go all the way. Then rose up certain of the elders of the land. So you got the princes standing up for Jeremiah. The priests and the, and the prophets are probably upset. Now the elders, the, the aged of the land. Thank to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah, the Mushroomite, that's the same Micah, the book of Micah. And he preaches about the time of, Jer uh, of Isaiah. In the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Thank to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field. Like the back of Jesus. Jerusalem shall become heaps. And the mountains of the house as the high places of the forest. Did Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord? And besought the Lord? And the Lord repented of the evil which they pronounced against them? You're like, hey, listen, you know, Micah has got the same message Jeremiah had. And they repented. Thus might we procure 
great evil against our soul. Maybe God will do the same thing happen in Hezekiah's time. I guarantee the priests and the prophets are getting really upset right now. There was also a man prophesying the name of the Lord, Urijah, Urijah, uh, the son of Shimea of Kirch of Jerem, who prophesied against this city, against this land. See, it's prophets, plural. All the words of Jeremiah, they listen. It's written down. The people, the priests, the false prophets just don't want to do. And we see who's running the city. As who was running the city in the time of Jesus, the priest. When Jehoiakim the king with all his mighty men. And all the princes. Heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. Hey, sounds like what we're talking right now, current events. But when Uriah heard it. He was afraid and fled and went to Egypt. He fled. And I'm going, don't get so bold. Oh, no, I, I stand and I die for the name. You don't know what you do. Jehoi King sent men into Egypt, namely Elvith, El Nathan, the son of Achor, and certain men with him into Egypt. And they fetched for Uriah out of Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim the king, who slew him with the sword. There's innocent blood. And cast his dead body in the graves of the common people. You mean where the money of Judas went and bought the potter's field? And don't you see the trial of Jesus? One man set free. One man is killed. Barabbas went home that day. Micah was set free. Nevertheless, the land, I mean, excuse me, nevertheless, the hand of how it came, the son of Shephan, was with Jeremiah, that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Oh, uh, the tight do not go all the way because Jesus in the hand of the people in the, in the priest went to the cross, death. Jeremiah is spared. But look where his stance is. Remember, Jeremiah is a priest. And when he's in the temple, he's on his own ground. He's probably with his family, his kinship, his friends, close friends. And when these priests are looking at Jeremiah, who do you think you are? Jeremiah is a priest. I've had family. Who do you think you are with the Bible? Who do you think you tell us? Hey, I just got the word of God. That's not what our church said. That's not what we believe. What well, will be fine. I'm going to preach the word of God. You be angry and all that. That's perfectly fine. God is pleased. When I go to the farmer's market and I preach the gospel and nothing else, there are people there that hate it. And they want me dead, I guarantee. They want me shut up. They tried the law. And they're angry that the law can't stop me. And they want me gone. And there are some people that step up to the plate and say, Listen, you know what? He's got the Constitution right. Now, I don't believe in that God, but he's got the Constitution right. I like the fact is he, he does what he wants to do. And what he has the right to do. And you know they believe I'm standing for the constant. No I'm there for Jesus Christ. And there are people that love what I do. And there are people who wow it's great what you do. And they're probably praying for me.
But when you're going to take stand up for God, the devil, and religion, and man is going to try to kick you down. That's why, that's why many Christians don't do the work or the proper work of the ministry. You know, if I'd like them to church, you know, that's everybody, you know, they're not going to get upset I'd like them to church. That doesn't get people angry. But if I get in their face and say, turn or burn, there's a hell and you're going to hell and your Pope can't do nothing. Nothing about it. Your religion can't do nothing about it. Unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll burn in hell. You'll burn in hell for all eternity. Believe on Jesus, be saved. And you believe on Jesus, you'll go to heaven. And, and listen, everything is great in heaven. No more pain, no more sin. But only Jesus saved. And who does he think he is? And people come up, well, it's not what the Bible says. You don't know what the Bible says. Shut up. Yeah. And they hear you. They hear you. Problem is, they don't want to hear you. 